A cylindrical block of ice of cross-sectional area 12 meters square is floating. So this is the block here floating, partially submerged in the water. The ice density of sea water is given to us. That's our rho, which we will use later. A polar bear of 400 kg steps on the box. You see this cute polar bear. Okay, so once you put something on a cylinder floating in water, you will press it down. So the polar bear is heavy, right? So the block of ice now sinks a vertical distance d. What is the value of d? Hmm. If you find it hard to imagine because this is a 3D picture, maybe we can draw a, a 2D to help us understand a little bit. Imagine you have water and you have this um, block of ice. Let's exaggerate a bit and it's this thick. So the water kind of goes until... No, maybe not so high. Let's say until here. Okay, and then once the polar bear comes and step on this block, maybe it will sink down a little bit so it goes boop, goes down. Okay, I mean I can draw another one now. Okay, I draw another one there. It sink lower. Why does it sink lower though? That is a question to help us get started. Now the polar bear is heavy, so there's like an extra force trying to push down this whole block. That is going to be mg from the polar bear's weight. But in the first place, what keeps all of this floating? You can say, oh miss, but 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 in the beginning, the ice block also heavy, ma, also got mg, right? Actually got. So here, there's a small mg, whereas down here, there's mg plus the weight of polar bear. So actually, there's two weights. This is the full picture. What keeps the block up? That's going to be what we call the upthrust force. Due to a certain volume submerged inside the water, so it's going to be an upthrust force that keeps, uh, just keeps everything balanced. Then once you press out more, it's more in the water. There's an even bigger upthrust force to counter that to make sure that everything's in equilibrium. So all this is down in the water. right? So the new change in, in upthrust rather is due to the weight of polar bear. That we just add in. So there's a change in upthrust. Remember, it's a change. Uh? So if you want to find the, the distance of D, you're not sure where to start. Maybe start with some forces. And try and balance out some forces here. So let's see. Um, downwards force is mg, upwards force is u. What we could say perhaps is the change in the weight of this whole polar bear and ice cube together, change in weight, equals to the change in upthrust. Up trust got bigger. By how much? Weight got bigger. By how much? They should be the same because we still cancel out in equilibrium. Then we go to, all right, the change is due to the polar bear's mass, M. So we say, all right, the polar bear is the one that caused this. Okay. And we say up trust is due to, what's the equation for up trust? Got to remember this is rho V G. Change, perhaps... In volume, if you want to add that to be specific, there's going to be a delta or VG. And we don't add the part that did not change because they say, oh, how about the weight of the ice? Okay, so sure, weight of the ice. But then you have up trust in the initial. So too many terms. We just look at the change. We don't need to worry about that. All right, let's continue here. G and G cancel out. So all we have left is mass. Rho, the change in volume here is, we don't have anything about volume, but... We want to see how much the blocks sink in. So we can consider the volume of a cylinder, which is going to be the cross-section area A, times the height of this thing. So the change in height. So maybe it was originally this tall. We just want to find what's a, a small change there. Height or change in length, ayah, whichever one. Now, okay. So this is rho times A, H. Then we plug in the values. Polar bear, 400 kg, very heavy. Density, 1080. Cross-section area. Where's my cross-section area? Ah, on top there. A. So this is 12. And lastly, the height. Or rather, the change in distance. This is based on uh, the volume of cylinder. So this is change, aka D, which we want to find. Press calculator. We take 400. Divide. Where's my 400? Divide by... 1, 0, 2, 0, and 12, we get 0 point... Oh, that's in a very small value. Okay, anyway, this height is 
CM. Okay, so we can look for the answers 3.268. That would be the one down here. Oh, three. Oh, 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 three point three. Let me blink my eyes a bit. One is millimeter. One is in cm. Please be very careful, ah. Uh. This one is in cm. So three point three cm. Best choice is B. That's how we can find this one. All right. So when you see objects floating in water, make sure you remember how to find the upthrust that keeps objects afloat, and that's going to be upthrust rho v g. Usually, we see, we easier to find change, lah. But if not, that's the main formula to go about. Alright, so that's all for this video. I'll see you in the next one.